Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. And um, I'm kind of laughing a little bit here because I have had so much trouble trying to get this video recorded. Some of the mistakes were mine. Some I attribute to changes in the Zoom software. But uh, I'm very grateful for those of you who follow me on my YouTube channel, on Facebook, and on Instagram, because you have encouraged me, <clears throat> excuse me, to try this video again. So I'm doing it because I love you guys. And the pattern I want to show you is called Cassette, and it's by Heidi. Okay, she's also a CZT and very talented. And I originally met her through Instagram when she, <clears throat> before she even became a CZT. And she um, does some really awesome work. But anyway, uh, this is the first one that I did with that pattern. And this is on a piece of paper that I had previously colored with watercolors. And then I did it. Okay, so this was just my practice piece. And then I did a video for this one on a craft colored tile that I cut. And I somehow, the video was overwritten. So I lost it, didn't get to upload it. So at my sister's suggestion, she said, okay, try it on a different color. So then I tried it in a gray tile with blue pastel pencil. Um, this is what I used, uh, General's Pastel Chalk in Indigo Blue on this one. And then I um, did not do that video correctly. So you never saw what I was doing, you just saw my face the whole time, which doesn't help you. So I'm gonna do this one more time. And this time I'm going to use a Zentangle tile. This is one that I started on something else and I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And you'll also notice that I'm using a white background now because I was finding that with that red background, I couldn't get my tiles to look like they were the correct color. Okay, so this is actually a, a pretty simple pattern. And on these, I started the pattern like this, but I'm gonna do it on more of an angle so that it ends up more square on the page. So it's really a simple pattern. I'm going to use the brown microns. I'm gonna use an O1 and a PN. Uh, you can do this on any color tile that you want and uh, use any kind of shading that you want. I'm going to use a Derwent pastel pencil and it's kind of a um, maroonish, same color as you see here, but it looks really pretty on this. I have a separate uh, blending stump for that. I'm also going to use uh, white chalk pencil and a blending stump for that. And I'll be using a jelly roll pen. And I tell you, I could probably do this in my sleep now. <laughs> this will be my fourth time to try it. So actually I'm, let's see. I just realized that my PN that I have here is a darker one. I don't want dark, so I'm not gonna use that PN. I'll just be using this, okay? So it begins just with like a simple flower there in the center. So just guess at it. Let's put a circle. And then we're going to make four petals. And I'm going to try to make mine 
the same size, but I rarely do. And that's okay. I turn my tile, make another petal, and continue until I have four petals. Okay. And then the next thing we're going to do is add a line that comes down like this. And if you look at uh, the tanglepatterns.com website, this is one of the newer patterns that has been added to the website. And Heidi has a lot of cool ideas for things that you can do on this. Okay, so I did this first line about two thirds of the way down. And then I did an aura inside that. And now I'm going to add an orb and below that two little lines. So it ends up to me looking kind of like a little comet inside there. Okay, let's do that again. We're going to come down about two thirds of the way on this petal. I'm going to aura that and then add an orb inside. And then we're just going to continue doing that. Oops, I did put my little tails on here. The first tiles that I did were four inch tiles. This one is three and a half. Okay, so there's our first layer of cassette. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is where this line came down and met this petal, I'm going to put another petal. But now I'm gonna go to this side. Put my aura inside my orb and two little tails. And then again, where this one meets this petal, I'm gonna add another petal. Come to this side, add my aura and an orb and the little tails. Now you just continue going around like that. And as always, if I'm going too fast, you're welcome to slow this down with your YouTube settings or pause it. Or if I'm going too slow for you, you can speed it up. Like I said, this is my fourth time to do this tile, so it's getting easier. I do enjoy mono tangles because you get to where you understand exactly what you're doing and it's more relaxing. Okay, so we're gonna do one more layer out here. And again, where this petal or this outside edge meets this edge, we're gonna add another petal. And we're gonna come this way. Add our aura, add our orb, and our little tails. Again, where this came around, we're going to add our petal. All 
our outside line and aura and another orb. And then we're just gonna keep going. We have had so much rain here in the Houston area and we have a partly cloudy sky today. I'm happy to say that maybe some of this will dry up. You would think that rain is awesome for your garden and it is in small amounts, but it has literally killed my kale. And I'm very sad about that. I use my kale every morning for a fresh smoothie. Okay, so we've done that first layer. This was our second layer and this was our third. So now on our third layer, we're gonna go and add this same thing, but on the opposite side. So I'm gonna start at the top and come over. Add my aura, my orb, and our little tails. Turn and do the same thing. Our outside line, the aura, the orb, and our little tail. I wasn't very consistent on that. I probably should have made it a little bit higher, but that's okay. No mistakes, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. Ideally, I was trying to get it to be at about the same on this area as it is on that side. But I think I was talking and not paying attention. Okay. So now we have our, all of our layers. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an aura around this whole thing. Turning your tile to keep your hand comfortable. And also, if you've listened to some of my recent videos, you know that I'm trying to help the monarch butterflies. And so far, 14 have flown away. It's a very fascinating process to watch <clears throat> from them being a tiny, tiny caterpillar to becoming a monarch. Okay. I think this one has kind of an odd shape because of that, but you're still getting an idea of how this will work for you. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to add some hatching. Actually, I I think I do better if I don't go up. I do better if I pull it towards me. So I'm going to go to each of these corners and add just a little bit of hatching. And I'm going to do it on both sides of the petals. So I'm just trying to do this so that I'm keeping my hand in the same position as I go around and add this hatching. 
I think it has a really pretty effect. You can even do this, let's say if you waiting in a doctor's office and you decide to do something and all you have is your pen or just any kind of pen and paper, you can use hatching like this to add your shading. You can also use what's called stippling, which is, um, let's say I wanted to add a little bit of shading in this corner. It's just barely touching with the tip of my pen. That's stippling. So just continue around until you get both sides of your petals with the hatching. It honestly took me a little bit of time to talk myself into doing this because <laughs> I was so disappointed that I had done two complete videos and lost them. And I'm grateful for those of you that said you would really like to see it. Okay, so I think I got all of them. The next thing I want to do is I'm gonna put a circle just inside of this circle so that I'm leaving a little bit of space on the outside. And then I'm gonna put a little dot. Actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill these in within that little circle. And we're gonna come back with our um, jelly roll pen to add a highlight. But if you happened to not have a jelly roll, you can just leave a little circle like this, a little dot. Okay. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. One thing about the Renaissance paper is it can only take so much ink before it starts getting to where it's too soft. So just be aware of that. Just an easy touch with your pen. Okay. So now we have each of those filled in. And now we're going to start adding some color, more color. So this again is a Derwent pastel pencil. This color is Burnt Carmine P610. Um, at my Texas Art Supply, we're able to go in and buy just single pencils. And so I got this one for another project. 
and I like the color that it adds, but I'm gonna go very easy on this because it's kind of dark. But it's also a kind of maroonish color. Like I said, I'm not putting too much on there. And now I have a um, blending stump. This one says pink slash red because I try to use the same basic color on my blending stump so that I'm not getting the black on there. And I'm just gently pulling that down in toward the center, but I want to leave that center open because we're going to put white in there. And then it's really going to pop. I get kind of little pieces of paper or the pastel coming off. So I'm having to kind of blow that away a little bit. Missed it here. Just take your time. Gonna miss that one. The color is a lot prettier in person. Here, I think you can see it a little bit better now. Okay, so now I'm going to get my white charcoal pencil. And I'm going to come in the center of each of these flowers and the petals and start adding some highlight. I think one of the nicest things about having papers that are not white is being able to use this white highlight with the charcoal pencil, or I mean the white charcoal.
It really makes a difference on your tile. Now I'm going to take my blending stump that I have set aside for white. And then I'm just going to gently push that into the paper. Again, being soft on this Renaissance paper. And it looks a lot brighter on the screen than it does on my actual tile. And that just happens to be the nature of these videos. Okay, so we have some other options that we could do here. Um, I think I'm going to do like I did on the blue tile, and I'm going to add a little bit of white under each of these, my little comet tails. And again, just soften that a little bit. And if you wanted to, you could add a little bit of color on this outside aura. Just very lightly. So I'm just going to add a little bit down here where that first line and the aura meet and where it would be going under that other petal, petal right here. Just add a little bit of this color. I need to find one that's a little bit more red. This looks more brown than I like, but it still has a good effect. And then my tortillon, and I'm just going to pull that up a little bit. I don't want it too dark. I can always add more if I want. But again, I just prefer that it not be too dark. So start out softly and then see what you think. See, these are a little bit darker than I wanted. You're always able to use a eraser if you want. I use erasers and sometimes I use rulers. Just remember to make this your art, do what makes you comfortable and do what makes you happy.
Okay. And I think I got each of those. Next thing I'm going to do is take my Jelly Roll tin and I'm going to make sure it's working. And I'm going to put a dot there in the center. And then at the top of each of my little comets on that little circle, I'm going to add a little highlight. Just one little dot. Being mindful that this takes a while to dry, so don't put your hand on top of where you've already put a dot. You seem to be drying kind of light, so I'm gonna go over them just a little bit. Okay. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an aura the same way that I did here. Okay, I'm gonna come out about the same, a little bit further than that aura. And I'm just going to use my pastel pencil and I'm gonna go around that edge and add another aura. I've seen Maria do this many times and it's a really cool effect. A lot of times she only does it on one side, but I'm gonna do it all the way around. Turn your tile, remember to breathe, remember to relax your shoulders, relax your hand. I think on the screen, this almost looks black. It's not, it's a dark brown. Okay, so I've got my uh, tortillon. And I'm going to pull this only out away from the tile or from the design. I don't want to push it in. I just want to pull it out and soften it a little bit. So I'm doing kind of little circles and holding it, softening it. And just keep going around, turning your tile, relaxing your hand. I have my tortillon almost flat down like this in my hand 
if you can see. I'm not pointing it straight down because that will just blunt the end of it. If you keep it on the side, it helps keep the end of it sharp. If that end gets too dirty, you can clean it with a nail file or a piece of sandpaper. When you buy a package of uh, tortillons or blending stumps, some of them come with a little board that has some sandpaper on it. Helps you to clean that up. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is take my charcoal pencil, the white charcoal, and I'm just gonna go in between that aura that I did with my pen and the aura that I just added. And just add another level of highlight. Another piece of interest. Okay, and I'm not going to soften that one. I'm just going to blow off any excess. And if you happen to find that um, you've lost some of the color along here, you can always redefine your line. So I'm just going to go along that outside aura. The first aura that I put was pin. And go over that one more time. To redefine the line is one of the tangle enhancements that we are taught. Oops, no mistakes. Okay. So we've redefined that line if you wanted to, even on the inside. with our little comet tails. We can redefine those lines because that white charcoal can cover up your lines. Okay, cool. I have done it for a fourth time. I hope you enjoyed this. And I am crossing my fingers and hoping that um, this video works, that three is a charm. So again, there's the name, Cassatt by Heidi K. And this is number one, number two, number <laughs> three,
three. Let's move that up a little bit. And number four. The only thing I need to do now is to add my chop. And I think I'm gonna, hmm, I think I'll add it here. I'm just gonna let it come off of this. There's my L, my B, and then I kind of echo that for my second B, and then three dots. And I change my chop occasionally, so that's my latest chop. And there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope this video works. <laughs> I hope you have a great week. If you've enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. And I always welcome a cup of coffee if you would like to buy me one. And you can do that by clicking on the KO-FI link in the description. I will add a link to the Tangle Patterns step out for this. Again, Heidi has some nice ideas for what you can do. I kind of combined a few of those ideas in these tiles. Again, have a great week. I thank you for watching my videos and for following me and for your wonderful comments. I appreciate it so much. Have a good week. I'll see you next time. Bye.